Imagine you are suffering from a severe chronic disease. You depend on monoclonal antibody therapy. However, this therapy, your lifeline, comes with severe adverse side effects. Inflammation, unrelenting headaches and constant fatigue, just to name a few. Worse still, its effectiveness diminishes over time. Is that the type of therapy you would want for yourself or your loved ones? Yet, this is the harsh reality for many patients who rely on antibody therapy, like the student Alexander who kindly shared his experience with us. But a new revolutionary approach is on the horizon to overcome these problems. B-cell therapy. A therapy applied as a one-time treatment which will constantly produce antibodies in the patient at the right place, at the right time. As the iGEM team Munich, we believe in this vision of B-cells as living and evolving drugs, and we will show you why you should too. So, what exactly is B-cell therapy? The idea is to take a patient's B-cells out of the body, manipulate them genetically to produce a specific therapeutic antibody, and then reintroduce them into the patient's lymph nodes. We can seamlessly integrate known antibody sequences into the B-cell's endogenous locus and thereby make them antibody factories against specific diseases. And what incredible potential does that unlock? What's truly remarkable about B-cell therapy compared to injected antibodies is that the B-cells can transform into memory cells and thereby offer lifelong protection. So no more repeated injections. Moreover, this technology retains the B-cells ability to undergo class switching and somatic hypermutation. So this means they really preserve all the strengths of the natural B-cell. This amazing technology was already proven to work in mice and pioneered by Adi Bartzlund's group, who we consulted with extensively to execute our project. As IT Munich, we built on their work to create B, B-cell engineering and enhancement, with which we want to enhance already existing B-cell engineering. So this means first, to extend the therapy to four different targets to prove its versatility. Second, to integrate extensively engineered antibodies with additional custom domains into B-cell for the first time. And lastly, to introduce additional functions and safety features to the cell. For this entire process, one of our top priorities was to be up to date with the latest scientific research. We consulted with over 20 experts from various fields to develop B-cells for the treatment of multiple diseases. Just imagine, with B-cell therapy we could revolutionize cancer treatment. With the cell therapy pioneer Uwe Platzbecker, we discussed the remarkable potential of B-cell memory, which lasts a lifetime. Therefore, we plan to convert our B-cells into an active prodrug. We aim to introduce a cancer-targeted antibody combined with IL-2, ready to be unleashed in the tumor microenvironment. Just like interlocking wheels, the B cells could kickstart a potent T cell response, which gets rid of the tumor. Furthermore, we highlighted the great opportunities of B cell therapy for bacterial infections with Stefan Sieber. Let's say we have an immunosuppressed patient we know could die if infected with the antibiotics resistant as auris, but a B cell could be injected prophylactically to save him. For this purpose, we integrated antibodies into the B cell which neutralize the dangerous bacterial exotoxin alpha hemolysin. Prevention is also the key to fight neurodegenerative disease, one of the most pressing global health issues. As emphasized by Oliver Witz, Alzheimer's disease is usually diagnosed several years after onset, making treatment almost impossible. We made our B cells produce antibodies that could not only target the plaque, but are also equipped with a blood brain barrier shuttle. So this is achieved by attaching additional single-chain variable fragments that bind to the transferrin receptor at the blood-brain barrier. And in this way, the B cell could be activated at the inception of a beta plaque formation, produce antibodies immediately, and resolve plaques before they are even formed. But our approach is not limited to Alzheimer's disease. With our bispecific antibodies, we pave the way to treat all brain-associated diseases with B cell therapy. Now let us also tell you how we can use the abilities of natural B cells for our advantage. Because B cells are still able to undergo class switching and somatic hypermutation, 
So this allows them to make the introduced antibodies even more effective against quickly mutating viruses. This makes chronic viral infections, such as hepatitis B virus, a perfect target for this revolutionary therapy. This was also underlined, as we can see, by Ulrike Potzer. Previously, we focused on the great opportunities B-cell therapy offers. But how should we seamlessly integrate these various antibodies into the cell? Here's our solution. We decided to express the antibody constructs continuously with heavy and light chains in the endogenous IgH locus. They can either be connected by a 2A-like system or alternatively via linkers, which prevents mispairing with the endogenous light chain. With this design outline in mind, we could add single chain variable fragments and product conjugates at different sites of the antibody, like piecing together Lego bricks. All the constructs with the extra domains, different targets and linkers amounted to a vast universe of constructs. The basic parts you can investigate in our extensive parts library. To ground these visions in reality, we forged data-driven models to predict their precise assembly and binding properties. Now it was time to turn our elaborate plans into action. After long hours in the lab, we were able to successfully clone over 20 constructs, a striking success that was confirmed with Sanger sequencing. The plasmids were transiently transfected into XP293 cells, which expressed a broad range of constructs. We used HPLC to successfully purify nine assembled antibodies and then confirmed it using an SDS page. Here you can see the heavy and light chain assembled as one antibody under oxidizing conditions. The chains are separated under reducing conditions at 23 kilodaltons for the light and 50 kilodaltons for the heavy chain. This way we could actually prove correctly. But how do we know if the antibodies work? For this we carried out several target-specific functionality assays. Firstly, we ran an indirect ELISA using our construct against the hepatitis B virus surface antigen. The readout confirmed a much higher affinity. For a second target, we evaluated in the if the bacterial exotoxin alpha hemolysin of Staph aureus could be neutralized by our antibodies. When directly applied to a blood agar plate, the exotoxin creates what is called a halo, a circle of dead cells in a dry hemolysis assay. But if our antibodies effectively bind to the exotoxin, it prevents cell death. This decrease in halo size and the corresponding reduction in cell death can be observed in nearly all of our constructs at different dilution. Nonetheless, our negative control gazecomab may also have prevented cell death to a certain degree. To ensure the reliability of our results, we will repeat the experiment for final confirmation. These results are perfectly supported by our modeling approaches, which confirm that despite our additional engineering, the binding affinity of our antibodies is not affected. But we could not only prove that we were successful in producing a variety of functional antibodies. We integrated our antibody constructs directly into the B cells heavy chain locus using CRISPR-Cas9. We achieved this by transfecting a linear homology template containing EGFR, a Cas9 system and two sgRNAs into Ramos B cells. One of these gRNAs was designed to target Ig lambda locus for light chain knockout. The other to introduce the antibody cassette into the endogenous IgH locus. In a first step, we confirmed a successful transfection by fluorescent markers present on the Cas9 containing plasmid. We then detected EGFR on the B cell surface and flow cytometry to verify stable integration of our antibodies. In our experiment, this antibody construct fused with a linker was stably integrated in the genome of 7 to 15 percent of our Ramos B cells. We can thereby prove that our B cells express structurally functional antibodies, presumably in the correct locus. A huge success. This elevates our project from mere antibody expression to the creation of engineered B cells that could carry any of our constructs. It turns our B cells into versatile and effective candidates for the cell therapy of the future. Our ambitions extend beyond the current accomplishments demonstrated with B cells. We have partnered with various stakeholders from academia and industry and are now preparing for the next phase of rigorous validation and testing. With assistance of EBD and RAND, we aim to verify the transcytosis of our antibody constructs across both a static and profuse blood-brain barrier models. 
and compare these results with our in silico AI-powered simulations. As our ultimate goal is to use primary cells for stable genome integration, we also plan to isolate B cells from commercially available PBMCs using the necessary materials provided by EBA. We furthermore remain focused on our cancer target and have been in detailed discussion with the Tum Nuclear Medicine Institute since July. Our goal is to integrate a specific anticholine-based radioligand developed by the Institute into our antibody constructs to track the in vivo efficacy of our B cells. But cell therapies, while promising, carry an inherent risk of severe adverse events, some potentially fatal. Long-term side effects, one of the main concerns raised by patients like Alexander, underscore the critical need for a comprehensive and rigorous safety strategy for our project. Therefore, we have incorporated a kill switch into our B cells, an inducible cuspase 914 which can trigger cell death upon binding a small molecule dimerizer. We have also introduced a truncated growth factor receptor, EGFR, that serves as a unique cell surface tag to monitor B cell localization, proliferation, and differentiation. In addition to therapeutic drug monitoring, this marker can act as a depletion factor, targeted by a monoclonal antibody, cetuximab. To further enhance patient safety, one could apply other, less selective mechanisms. For instance, we can further engineer our B cells to overexpress CD20, making them targetable by rituximab. As a last line of defense, General immunosuppressants, which have already been adopted for CAR T-cell therapy, could be used to provide a fail-safe safety cascade. Additionally, we have engaged in open dialogue with the National German Ethics Committee as a testament to both our comprehensive safety commitment and profound ethical responsibility. These opportunities inspire us to explore our project beyond iGEM and take a step forward to entrepreneurship. Let me guide you through the simulation of our startup, B. First, we investigated the B-cell therapy landscape by performing a market analysis and a competitor analysis. Interestingly, with only one B-cell therapy currently in clinical trials, the space of B-cell therapies is quite open. Next, through a SWOT analysis, we look at the potential strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats of our drafted business model. There are two arms of our revenue streams. On one hand, we outlicense our technologies to big pharmaceutical companies so they can enhance the safety profile of their B-cell therapy products. And on the other hand, we scout for the next superstars in the field of antibody therapy and co-develop the drug with them. Now, let's look at the roadmap. We aim to achieve proof of concept by the end of 2024 and LP filing by the end of 2025. At the suggestions, of our patent attorney, Bastian Julie, we will file our patents at the German Patent and Trademark Office while securing WePanel, a funding program from the German government for filing patents. By the end of 2026, we intend to finalize the outlicensing packages. For the co-development drug, we will initiate the IND submission to the FDA. With our co-development partner, we aim to work on the preclinical data, such as pharmacovigilance and pharmacokinetics of our drug on non-human primates models, such as beagle dogs and monkeys, to show that the drug causes minimum adverse events and has an optimal DLT. We also aim to provide in-depth clinical trial management services and support, such as ensuring our data handling meets the FDA 21 CFR Part 11 compliance, which essentially means that the records should be able to answer the question of who does what at when and where. Our business simulation does not stop here. What sets us apart is that we took a step forward to identify the most possible and feasible exit strategy. In our case, the best exit strategy is not merger and acquisition, but being publicly listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange market because of the listing rule chapter 18a, which allows venture capital backed by the company with two years of financial records to be publicly listed on the Hong Kong X, regardless of the profitability of the biotech company. This opens the door for a more robust financial vehicle, which at the end of the day would help us accelerate these therapies and shape the future of next generation therapeutics and help patients like Alexander. We would like to thank our advisors and sponsors who supported us and helped us along the way in making B a reality 
and amazing team that made this journey worthwhile.